Hello from our spare room. <laughs> I spent the majority of the day in here because um, we're painting the wall in our main bedroom and I have to be in bed at the moment because I am so flipping poorly. Um, so welcome to eight weeks pregnant. <laughs> it's been, um, I think this is like my third week of constant nausea from the minute I open my eyes to the minute I close them at night and I'm on struggle street I am struggling as you can see my hair needs a wash I am just in the most basic clothes ever I haven't worn makeup for ages and yeah it's tough it's really hard um however we had a little scan a little eight week scan and the little prawn <laughs> is growing nicely. I actually put them in a little book to show mum and dad because we've told our parents that we're pregnant now. Um, because we went to the scan, we heard the heartbeat, which was just, it was just mind blowing. It was amazing. Um, and yeah, the stats say, and this has really helped to reassure me a little bit, but the stats say that once you've heard a strong heartbeat at around eight weeks, it tends that the miscarriage rates tend to go down to around 3%. So while obviously nothing is guaranteed at any point in a pregnancy, um, I think it really helped to reassure both of us. Um, so we decided to tell our parents. I've told a couple of my friends as well because they are honestly helping me get through this <laughs> because I feel so rotten. Um, and I'm really glad I've got that support network around me, but it's also been so lovely to tell our parents and even though they are sworn to secrecy and they can't tell anyone else for a, another month or so, um, they're really excited. <laughs> like they are so, so excited. Um, so that was lovely to be able to tell them. Um, but here is a little prawn. I don't know if you can see. <gasps> that's bonkers, isn't it? So that's the yolk sac. And then that's, that's the little baby right there. Looking like a prawn. Um, but yeah, they said everything's growing exactly how it should be. The heartbeat was so strong and so loud. She heard it and she was like, wow that's really loud, that's really strong. She's like, that's a very good sign. And I just burst into tears. In fact, we both did. Um, and that was really lovely. And yeah, she looked at when she, when she did the scan, which was my first external scan, which was quite nice, not to be having things uh, prodded and poked up there. Um, but she was just like, yeah, that's the reason why you've been feeling so terrible. <laughs> and there it was on the screen with the little fluttering heartbeat and, yeah, it was amazing. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. I think the baby's, the baby's the size of a raspberry this week. As you can see, I'm still very emotional, cry at the tiniest things. Um, my boobs have gone down a little bit. Well, they're still massive, but they don't hurt as much. Well, they do, they ache, but they're not like as on fire as they have been, which is quite nice. Although I still can't really fit into any of my bras. So I think I might have to, buy a couple of bigger bras. Um, I'm struggling with clothes because I'm so bloated. I'm just feeling so dreadful. Today's a really bad day. It kind of goes, it kind of goes up and down a little bit, I guess. Um, some days, like today, I'm just 100% nauseous all the time and I'm feeling really dizzy, like the room is spinning. I still haven't actually been sick yet, touch wood, although, I don't know if just like being sick might help me or whatever, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm very gassy, <laughs> that's another thing. And then that makes me feel even more sick. Um, but yeah, the room is spinning. So I'm just, I have to sit down or lie down pretty much all the time. Just walking downstairs or just walking and standing up to get a drink is really, really hard. I get so out of breath, which apparently is to do with elevated progesterone levels I was reading, which is quite interesting. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel rotten. I feel totally, totally rotten. And of course, I am so, so grateful for this pregnancy. Um, I feel like that goes without saying, <laughs> to be honest. And if anybody calls at me and says, you don't have a right to complain because there's so many people who can't get pregnant. Yes, you do. Pregnant people, you do have a right to complain because it is 
awful. I know that there's people out there that don't suffer from morning sickness and feel totally fine. Others that get it even worse than me. Um, but it's really hard and it's okay if you're really not enjoying it at the moment. I love the fact that I'm pregnant. I'm really not enjoying this morning sickness and this nausea. It's not morning sickness, it's pregnancy sickness. That's what we're gonna call it from now on because morning sickness is a scam. It's fake news. Good days, I'm around 50% nauseous. So when I say that I'm feeling a little bit better, I'm not feeling better, but I'm just about 50-50 or 75% nauseous as opposed to 100% feel like I'm gonna vomit all the time and can't see straight. So yeah, it's, it's really tough. It is really, really tough. But we have our midwife appointment next week. We were supposed to have it yesterday or the day before, but it got cancelled. Um, because the midwife was off poorly so um, we're not in until next week which is when we will be nine weeks pregnant that's that's pretty much my update at the moment on struggle street not loving the nausea but very much loving being able to tell our parents that we're pregnant and sharing the excitement with them and yeah it's all cool hopefully i'll be a little bit chirpier the next time we speak because <laughs> but yeah welcome to eight weeks pregnant and um yeah still crossing everything and hoping that uh little prawn <laughs> is growing nicely certainly feels like they're kicking my ass at the moment so they're obviously doing something in there so we shall see i will see you next time <laughs> i look like an absolute mess what do you think toby can't smell your breath at the moment you're so cute and i love you very much but you need to point your face that way because i can't smell your breath it's too much i'm sorry um hi welcome to my nine week pregnancy update i just look at this just look at this i'm a broken woman um <laughs> i've already filmed this once i think i've like dropped noodles down myself as well so just just ignore it all um I'm a broken woman. Still haven't been sick. And I'm touching wood, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Like sometimes I just think if I was just able to be sick, I might get a bit of relief from it for a little bit, but <sighs> consistent nausea. And it's really getting me down. This is where I'm at right now. <laughs> um, I'm so tired, like so, so tired. And I must admit, I'm really enjoying being able to sleep. Although the heat wave this week is making that quite difficult. Um, but I'm really enjoying being able to sleep because you know me, I'm a chronic insomniac. So it's amazing for my head to hit the pillow and then I'm gone straight away. For those of you who can sleep like that normally, I'm very jealous. Um, because I do feel like when I go to sleep, I'm at the moment having really good night's sleep. I'm getting like sort of a solid eight hours, sometimes even nine hours every night. Um, but I'm still exhausted the next day and having to have naps and stuff. Or maybe not as tired as I was last week maybe I don't know or if I don't know if that's just positive hopeful thinking thinking that things are getting a bit easier um but I'm struggling yeah I am I'm so so tired however um I'm trying to cut myself some slack with that and not beat myself up too much about it because it, like, you kind of feel like you're being lazy or you, you're a bit pathetic because you're so tired but I keep having to remind myself that I am growing a human being and that's pretty huge. So no wonder I'm tired. It's exhausting all the time, even though I'm doing nothing. And that I must admit is starting to drive me a bit mad because I'm not really leaving the house much because I'm just feeling so, so sick. Um, and yeah, I sort of, you know me, I don't do well just sitting around resting, even though that is probably what I need to be doing right now because I'm not feeling great. But I'm starting, it's starting to drive me a little bit bonkers. Um, I don't actually have any jobs on at the moment, which again is worrying as a business when you have these lulls. I do tend to get them around the summertime anyway. Um, so I'm just trying to be grateful for the fact that there is that lull <laughs> instead of being too worried about it because it means that I can take the time to rest um, as opposed to having to work. But yeah, it's driving me a little bit mad at the minute. I've gone through pretty much everything on Netflix. I'm reading me books, I'm scrolling through TikTok, I'm just doing everything. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it feels, 
I don't feel lonely because I've told my closest friends and they check in on me every day and they play games with me and we like do watch parties for films and stuff when we can but it does start to feel quite draining and very lonely when you're just feeling constantly poorly and I feel really bad because when people check in on me like when Chris asks or my, my mum phones and asks like how are you feeling today I feel bad that it's the same answer every day and I'm like, I'm really not feeling good still. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I wish I could give you um, a better answer and be like, yeah, I'm feeling better today. I'm just not. It's, um, yeah, it's kicking my ass. But I think that the hormones are meant to be peaking this week and next week. So maybe after this next couple of weeks, things might start to ease up. Oh, I'm just crossing everything because I'd really, I've forgotten what it feels like to not feel sick. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to eat as much as I can when I can. Just had some noodles, which were all over me. It's so weird, like, sometimes just the thought of, like, plain toast, like, stuff that you would normally have when you're not feeling well, turns my stomach. But, like, salt and vinegar crisps, or those Japanese cup noodle things, I'll, I'll, I'll eat them, no problem. <laughs> that makes no sense. If you're feeling sick, you don't want things with flavor. But sometimes, like, those flavors are actually really helping me. It makes no sense and it changes day by day. At the moment it feels like it's changing hour by hour as well. Uh, which just makes it difficult to predict, I guess. Are you bringing me a beer? Thank you. It's very hot. It would be nice to have a non-alcoholic beer, but I um, don't even want that. I'm, I'm struggling to even keep water down and like drink enough. So I'm just trying my best. Um, loads of different ki kind of squashes and um, like flat diet coke and stuff like the caffeine free one that's been quite good just I'm do I'm surviving at the moment I'm not thriving I'm surviving but we're getting there aren't we we're getting there <laughs> um yeah I'm just hoping that one of these updates soon I will be presenting looking a bit more like myself um and I can say yes I'm actually feeling a little bit better so cross fingers toes and eyes that that happens soon but we had our first midwife appointment this week and the midwife was so lovely and um, she was so sympathetic and she was just amazing uh, when I explained, you know, that I've been feeling a little bit anxious um, because I don't know if I mentioned it, I don't think, I'm getting confused with my weeks now, but we had a little bit of spotting, yeah, it was this weekend so I haven't told you yet. Um, had a little bit of spotting over the weekend, which can be completely normal in early stages of pregnancy it can be like implantation bleeding things just settling in things expanding that kind of stuff and it really was like the teeniest tiniest amount um phoned the midwife line because that's what they say to do if you get any kind of bleeding or any change in color of discharge that kind of stuff so i phoned them and they were like it should be absolutely fine but i can't guarantee it <laughs> so is when they say that it's really frustrating I feel like it's when you take when you phone the vets if your dog's like done something or eaten something and they're like should be fine but we can't guarantee so it's up to you if you bring him in and it's like horrible leaving that on you but um yeah that kind of freaked me out a little bit at the weekend again I'm pretty sure that everything is fine like gut feeling I think feels like everything should be fine I'm trying not to spiral um, and pretty much everybody that I've spoken to who's, who has been pregnant or is pregnant now um, has had some kind of bleeding like that as well and but yeah it was it's kind of been playing on my mind but not like fully I'm really trying to not sort of spiral but obviously when you had a miscarriage and that's how our miscarriage started before it sets your brain off a little bit so um, yeah we have a 10 week scan on Saturday it's currently what is it today? <laughs> Wednesday? Ah, oh, so they're only like two days away, that's really good. Um, so I'm glad that we've got that booked in. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just out of breath. I'm really glad that we got that booked in um, because it, you know, it's played on my mind. But as far as the midwife appointment went, it went really well. She took my bloods and um, did all my measurements and stuff. The one thing that really took me aback, and I don't know why it took me aback because I probably should have expected it, but Chris came along with me. I was like, you don't need to come with me. It's absolutely fine. He's like, no, I want to be there. <laughs> He's just been, sorry, I'm gonna cry. He's just been so incredible, so amazing. Like he's just picked up the slack with everything. 
all the house stuff, all the cooking, all the shopping, all the washing, everything because I'm feeling so sick. And like honestly, just standing up just instantly makes me feel horrendous. Like, unless I'm sat or lying down, oh, I just feel dreadful. Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> Still very emotional, as you can tell. But Chris has just been amazing and um, he wanted to come along with me and I'm glad he did actually in the end because they had to ask him lots of questions about his family history as well. So they can put the both both together and get like a good picture of as to your risk and stuff. Um, but they were asking, so the midwife was asking him questions and then the, the, the I think it must have been the other midwife there. She took me out to do weigh me and do my height and all that kind of stuff because they still got off BMI, which is a bit of a load of rubbish, isn't it? Let's be honest. But um, yeah, they went out to do all that. And it really took me aback because when I was out of the room getting weighed, I was just sort of stood there, she was doing my height and she was just like, do you feel safe at home, love? And I'm like, uh, yeah yeah of course i do and then she was like and you're not being abused or coerced in any way and I was, my heart honestly just sank i started to burst into i started to cry and i had to say to her i said i'm so sorry i'm not crying because i'm lying to you i feel very very safe i love my husband like i'm not being abused everything's fine i'm just crying for the women that are and she was like it's totally okay i understand but it just really blindsided me the question because I just like I said silly really I probably should have expected it but I just didn't expect it and it just made me feel really sad um for people that do struggle like that and are in that situation because it's so scary at times and it's really lonely being pregnant and then having to deal with all that as well oh my god it's just a lot anyway sorry <laughs> sorry um, yeah, so that really blindsided me. I must admit, I wasn't expecting that, those questions. Um, but then it was just the usual stuff like health things and whatever. And um, yeah, I think everything basically looked good. She said, you're currently sitting at a low risk pregnancy. Have to be under consultant led care due to some of my health things that I have going on. Um, and she said that they do tend to watch people who have had previous mental health issues such as depression or severe anxiety a little bit more closely because we can, not always, but we can be more predisposed to things like postnatal depression, post and prenatal depression. Um, so that was really nice actually, that to know that that support is there and that they are on it with that kind of stuff because that is honestly one of my worries. Um, is my susceptibility to postnatal depression because of my previous experiences with depression. So um, yeah, it was really comforting to know that they that they've just got you, and they'll 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 just keep an extra eye on you and and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was just it was a very very positive experience overall. Even though you wouldn't tell by my face, um, very positive experience. And uh, the midwife is lovely, and it look, turns out that she's going to be the one that will be at my GP surgery that I'll be seeing pretty much all the way through. So that's nice as well. Um, and she said that they will send me a letter about our dating scan, our twelve week scan. And we just kind of go from there. And they gave me like loads of bump, <laughs> loads of leaflets and stuff and told me to get a folder. And um, yeah, that was it. So it's been, actually it's been quite an eventful week really in regards to um, having those appointments and then the, the fact that we've got the 10 weeks going coming up, which I'll hopefully be able to tell you about in the next vlog. Um, I'm feeling a little bit worried about this scan. This is the first one where I'm feeling very anxious. I felt like the other ones there was always that little bit of anxiety because you know but um I felt like this one I'm extra anxious about I think it was a little bit because of the bleeding and mostly because every week it just gets more real and real doesn't it I suppose and because I've been feeling so sick and so ill I, I've really been living it does that make sense like, I really feel like I've been pregnant <laughs> So, um, yeah, it'll be awful if it's not good news. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But overall, <laughs> to con in conclusion, um, 
I need to wash my hair. I've been actually thinking about, um, because there's a, um, what they call like a mobile hairdresser that comes on the estate. I've genuinely been thinking about booking her in just to come and wash my hair for me and blow dry it and curl it and make it nice because I just don't have the energy. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm tempted. I'm actually tempted to be like a be like a grandma. <laughs> and get a lady to come in and style my hair and try and make me not look this rubbish because I'm actually aiming to leave the house on Friday um which I'm again really nervous about but I'm going with my bridesmaids and they both know and they're you know so if I need to bail or run to the loo or anything then they totally understand but um yeah we're going out for lunch and stuff and it's it's really nerve-wracking going out in public out of the safety of your house without your bathroom close by so um yeah i kind of want to try my best to look nice for that um and then the scan on saturday i'll be leaving the house twice i haven't left the house in like nearly a week genuinely apart from to go to the midwife appointment at the hospital which didn't make me anxious because i feel like if you're sick in a hospital then most people are just well sick person in hospital no problem <laughs> Sick in a restaurant. Very, very different. Try my best. Surviving, not thriving. I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to do my best and get nutrients in and just be the best pregnant person I can be. Which I haven't felt like I've been beating because I've just felt so rubbish. But it's all part of the game, <laughs> it's all part of the beauty of pregnancy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I found that like the secret chats on Flow have been really quite helpful because they're completely anonymous and you don't have to like sign up and make an account and all that kind of stuff. You can just go and you can just post. And I have to say that I posted something the other day in like the pregnancy sickness bit. It was really reassuring reading down and reading other people's stuff and seeing that other people feel the same and I just shared my thoughts. and. I, I realised this morning because I hadn't checked. I had like five, six messages from people replying to me and start telling me that I'm doing really well and that they feel exactly the same and I'm not alone. And that was really quite nice. Because yeah, you shouldn't do because you're doing something incredible. You are creating a person from scratch. But you do kind of feel, sometimes you just feel a bit pathetic and I just feel like I'm not doing a very good job. This is nine weeks. It is brutal. <laughs> and um, just crossing fingers, toes, and eyes that I start to feel a little bit better. I'll just get a little bit of relief. I'd really like a day off. Can I just schedule a day off from being pregnant and feeling sick all the time? Just go out, like have like loads of food and be able to like down loads of water without worry. No, just gotta keep going with it. Okay. All right then, just. Let's go, week 10, fingers crossed. <laughs>